Game playing, human versus AI. Game playing using AI have been around since many many years before. So, for example, this is uh, in the game of checkers. Uh, there's an AI called Shinok, played with Marin Tinsley, uh, who is the world champion for checkers. In the first series, Tinsley won four, uh, lost two, and drew 33 games. Okay. And then they decided to do a rematch in 1994, whereby after several draws, Tinsley withdrew um, for health reasons and resigned his title as world champion. Uh, there's also Deep Blue, Deep Blue versus Gary Kasparov. Um, first match in 1996, Gary won 4-2, and they did a second match in 1997, whereby the score is three and a half, two and a half. Uh, and Deep Blue won. So if you guys have had a chance to watch uh, a Netflix series on, on chess called Queen's Gambit, so you guys would understand how intense the games were in chess and how serious they were with playing uh, chess. So when Deep Blue uh, beat Gary Kasparov in 1997, um, it became a sensation. A lot of people paid attention to it. There's also uh, Quakel versus David Boyce. This is uh, less famous, but then in 2007 in Canada, Quakel and AI beat former Scrabble world champion David Boyce in a set of five matches. So the AI called Quakel has a vast database of words, and then it enables to scan the board for potential words and link letters in un unexpected ways. Okay, and eventually uh, beat David Boyce. But one of the biggest AI versus human match is the AlphaGo match against Lee Sedo, uh, a Korean who plays the Go game. So this this match has been called the match of the century. Uh, it's one of the biggest. It's been done for several days in 2016 in, in Seoul. Uh, there are five games, uh, Go match, with uh, whereby AlphaGo won all games except for the fourth game. So in the fourth game, uh, Lisedo played uh, a famous move which managed to beat AlphaGo. But for all the other games, AlphaGo won. And quite recently, uh, Lisedo have also retired. So most of the players, champions, Played with, or who played with AI have eventually uh, retired nowadays. So, why do games attract interest of computer scientists? When you play a game, there's a lot of possibilities based on the moves. So, different moves would result to different outcome. You can win, you can lose, you can draw. So, it seemed to be a good domain for work on AI. Games are thought to provide a source of a good structure task in which success or failure is easy to measure. So in games, you know, if you do this way, this should be the outcome. If you do that, that way, that should be the outcome. So when you want to test AI, it's easier because uh, you can guess the outcome. So if you get something else, then there's something wrong with your AI. So, um, <clears throat> There are several types of games. So the most simple, simplest one is deterministic single player perfect information, whereby we know the rule, we know what action that we can do, and we know how to win and when we can win. For example, free cell, eight puzzle, Rubik's Cube. So like eight puzzle, I'm sure you are very familiar with it since you've done a lot of work on eight puzzle. When you, you are playing it alone, once you get the tiles to be at the correct places, then you, you consider it as one game. Same as Rubik's Cube, uh, once you get all the num all the colors um, correctly, then you consider uh, you won the game. So when, when you play a deterministic single player perfect information, it's actually a search, okay? Because you know that each node stores a value, so you need to choose the best outcome that it, you can reach. There's a maximal outcome. And then you know that from these three, if you go this pass, you will lose. You go this pass, you will win. You go this pass, you will lose. So obviously, you want to choose the one with the most uh, maximum utility value. 
However, in real life, that is not the case. Most of the games are not played as a single player. You have two players at least, uh, and then a lot more consists of multiplayer. And some of it are non-deterministic and lack imperfect information. So for example, like Scramble, um, it's not that easy to guess what word will the other person uh, use. Okay, seems like same, same like the games of Hearts Bridge, whereby uh, your friends might have a poker face. You cannot guess what move they want to do. Uh, cooperative games are also complicated. Real-time strategy strategy games is especially complicated, whereby uh, there's no such thing as uh, I move first and then you move first. Both players or all the players move at the same time. Okay, so this type of of problems of games are more complicated and much harder for AI to replicate. However, uh, with the advancement of technology, um, there are AIs that can play this so-called hard games. So this is one one example um, of an AI program called Pluribus playing uh, Texas Hold'em. So uh, they managed to to beat real human. And then there's also OpenAI 5. Um, this shows the timeline, how many times they have uh, won a match, how many times they have lost a match. And this is an article from last year, whereby they managed to defeat Dota 2 World Champions. And they also managed to beat human players in StarCraft 2. Okay, so Deep Minds Alpha Star. So it shows that um, even the complicated games, AI can already play and play very well to beat humans. Right? That's all we have for now. Thanks for watching.